And if you can get through a 40 thousandths diameter hole without breaking a drill, I'd say you're having a good day. Chip is continuing to come out, so I'm just going to keep on going. Hey everybody, this is Richard, and welcome back to Making Something From Nothing. I know, I know, you guys are saying, where the heck have you been? It's been four or five weeks. Well, let me be honest with you. In the last four to five, six weeks, I've had some serious issues over here. It all started off with the mower and a fuel pump going bad. The replacement part was bad, so I ended up doing my own fix. A couple days later, I had all the Verizon equipment get fried by a surge. It took out every box they had inside and outside, their router, my phone, one computer, damaged another computer, I lost some software, and had to deal with that for about a week or a week and a half. Then the plumbing over in one of the showers went out. There's no access panel, so I had to rip out a wall. And, of course, the thermostat for the air conditioner went out and had to deal with that. So, to make a long story short, when I lost the computer equipment, I lost some project videos and some customer jobs. I thought about this project for a while, and even though I had taken a, a ton of footage on it, uh, it's all gone. It's gone. Uh, what? It's gone. It's all gone. Let me at least show you what it does and how it works, and then we'll move on to the next one. Now, the main purpose of this guy here is to use in combination with the tailstock to go ahead and make a poor man's DRO. Well, basically what other people have done is they've taken their tailstock and they milled themselves a flat spot up here to go ahead and mount one of these guys, uh, a digital caliper. So this way when they extend the quill, it'll move this out and they could gauge exactly how far they're drilling or you know whatever operation they're doing into the work. I wanted to come up with a different system that didn't caused me to go ahead and modify the lathe whatsoever. Now this is my Loris tool post in its uh, normal position. It's usually square to the headstock and you could just drop a tool on either here like that and lock it up or drop a tool in here like that and lock. In order to use the tool holder that has the dial indicator on it I need to go ahead and maneuver this into a different position. So let me show you that. And instead of the dovetails being directly this way and directly this way, I'm going to go ahead and swap it around 90 degrees to where I've got one dovetail in the front and I've got the other one facing towards the tailstock. So basically what I want to do is square up the tool post to the tail stock. So I'm just going to go ahead and hold it right up against the quill. And tighten it down. Theoretically that should put the Allure's tool post perpendicular to the quill. So for two tenths over two and a quarter inches, I'm not going to worry about it. It's good enough for anything that I do. Now I've got a dovetail over on this side, so I'm going to go ahead and utilize it. And I'm going to drop that in right there. Okay, so with the tool bit in, obviously I can't use the dial indicator up against the face of the chuck in order to find out how far I'm moving that way because the indicator's in the way. So, in order to get some clearance, so the drill bit can get past the indicator, a little modification needs to be made over here on the chuck end. Now, I certainly don't want to modify anything mechanically, 
for using machine equipment, right? I'm going to use my Indical. This is a indicator holder for over on the mill. Well, as luck will have it, the chuck, at least this face right here, which is a machine face, is pretty much the same size as most standard quills. And most importantly, it's perpendicular to the axis of the lathe. And now that we have the Indical mounted up here, now I could bring the indicator in, it misses the drill bit, and it engages the Indical. But now when I move the quill in and out, I'm doing it by thousands. And as long as I have this set up right, this will go ahead and give me at least one inch of travel. But the beauty of this thing is rather than using these little uh, increments, you know, which are great, you know, on a quill, but if you need to dial in a certain amount, like 36 thousandths, there's no way you're going to be able to do it with that. You know, you could dial in a sixteenth and come pretty close, but, you know, it's still not going to be exact. But with an indicator set up, now when I move the quill, I know exactly how far I'm moving. So I think you kind of get the picture on what this thing does. If you do something like that and you don't have an Indical and it doesn't fit your chuck, then you're going to have to make a bracket of some sort that works. Kind of like the Indical to where it just clamps on. And I could take this on and off in just seconds. And the way this is made, it's always going to be perpendicular to the chuck. So this thing is actually pretty nice. And if push comes to shove and I need to drill a deeper hole, and know how far I'm going, I can use my 2 inch indicator. And this is 3 eighths, and that's 3 eighths. So this one will fit right into that holder there. So I've got two options, a one inch indicator and also two inch. What's the other purpose of uh, this guy? Well, I think everybody's already figured it out. But in case you haven't, I'll go ahead and show you. So we'll go ahead and pull this guy out. Now I could drop the indicator in in this position here well, for demonstration purposes, let's assume this is a four-jaw chuck. I'm just going to raise this up until I get my high spot, which is right there, which is going to be the center of the work. And now with the tool in this position, you can go ahead and use it to indicate in your work. I think you get the picture. So it doubles as a tailstock DRO and also as an indicator holder. So that brings us over to the uh, the little baby Albrecht chuck. It's a little pin chuck. I think the maximum diameter drill this will hold It's smaller than one eighth. So this is going to hold those little tiny number drills that go all the way up to like 80, which are like thin as a hair. Now if you try and use the tailstock with one of these tiny drills, I mean look at the size of this thing. Yeah, it's like 40 thousandths. 
the web on this thing has got to be like 15 thousandths or something after they put the flutes in. But it, it, if you try using your tailstock with the big screw that's in it and try and force this into some steel or you know some hard brass, some aluminum bronze, whatever, uh, more than likely you're just going to snap this thing off. So that's what this little pin chuck is good for. It's holding these little tiny drills and I made this uh, adapter sleeve. Of course this is not a new idea. Making something from nothing did not invent this. This is a half inch shank. I basically took some 5A stock, drilled it half inch, or drilled it 3164 and then reamed it half inch. And this fits in there perfectly. There's so much suction on this thing, it'll actually pull it back in. So my little sleeve goes in the Albrecht chuck. Is rather than use the quill to go ahead and move the drill bit back and forth into the work, you're just going to do it by hand because your hand is going to give you a much better feel of what's going on over here on the business end of the drill. So you drill a little bit, you back off, clean off the chips, drill a little bit, back off, clean off the chips, do some oiling, do whatever you're doing, WD-40. You get focused on the tool. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. We're just going to go ahead and face it off, put in a, a tiny center, then attempt to, to drill it without busting a 40 thousandths drill with a web of a probably 15 thousandths. It's the first time I've ran the lathe in five weeks. going to spot the face so the drill knows where to start. We'll go ahead and put this guy in. At this point on we're not going to be using the the quill. Going to be using our hand. So I'm going to walk this forward until I see some chips. I can feel the pressure really nice with my fingers. Chip is continuing to come out, so I'm just going to keep on going. Now it's not very often that you need to drill a tiny little hole like that. But having a little pin chuck with a nice sliding sleeve that's a good fit will certainly make the job easier and keeps you from breaking a couple dollar drill because you're not going to buy this over at Home Depot or Lowe's you're going to have to order it online probably in a set and pay shipping so you break one of these and it's the only one you have you're probably out 15 bucks if not more so it's well worth doing. Like I said, I did not invent this. I've seen this on a couple of channels, but I want to make some new tools for around the shop. Uh, before I had all my problems this month, I kind of wanted to put together, you know, a type of series called uh, Tool Making Tuesday. Uh, I'm probably not going to put out a video every single Tuesday making a new tool for the shop, but there's a lot of things I need around here, and I want to put out videos on a more regular basis. It's well worth taking a couple inches of steel and making one for yourself. I don't know why I made it so long. 
because the shank is only that big, but uh, it is what it is. Well, this is the fourth big one in the last two weeks. Must be egg laying season. Well, he's lucky I'm busy today. Otherwise, he might end up being lunch. They climb out of the lake that's uh, next to my shop here. Lay eggs in the yard every year. Not a bad view, eh? 